Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the bevel modifier. So I'm going to switch over in back into Eevee here. And so we can see all of our nice colors. Maybe even change this last one we did. Let's change the color on that. We'll just subtract that one, add a new color, change the base color to maybe something over here. And just rename it purple, I guess. Let's take our original Suzanne here, our flexible design, right click and duplicate the collection. And let's just call this bevel. So just type bevel, just type suzanne.bevel. And now we can grab this monkey, G and Y, bring it up, and G and X, and bring it over. There we go, we're making, look at our little grid of monkeys here. And then we can hit period to zap to that design there. And so to add the bevel modifier, we're just gonna go to our wrench tab here, drop down the modifier, and right here, the second one on the second column is bevel, and it will bevel the edges. And it's kind of hard to see what is happening. So for beveling, sometimes I will turn on the wireframe. So go to your drop down overlays here and just tick on your wireframe. Boop. And now we can kind of see what's happening here. And nothing's really happening. And that is because it's happening after our bool tools. So a lot of clipping is happening. So let's just drag the bevel to the top. And there we go. Now we can see something is happening on our edges here. We can crank the amount to maybe like 0.3, there we go. So we're getting a little bit more um, action there. And we can even crank up the segments to kind of round out the edges of our design here. And that's gonna make it look very nice and just kind of curvy. Cause nothing in real life is a straight perfect edge. Notice we do have some straight perfect edges right here. It's like, why is it, it's beveling here, but it's not beveling here. And that's because we have a limit method on with the angle. So if we turn that to none, now we get everything will bevel for us. And there's many different types. We're not gonna go into all of these today. We have a, a uh, modifiers course that you can take as a member and get all this in depth for, you know, what all of these do, the differences between each one. Um, but we can just leave it on offset and none. And notice if we crank up the, the bevel amount, eventually it just kind of stops. So it just kind of like, bloop, and it stops there, but the numbers keep going. So it's like, what is happening? And what's happening is that on their geometry, we have clamps turned on. So it's Blender's trying to stop you from destroying the mesh. So as long as you still have this on, it's gonna kind of, you know, just stop once you've kind of reached a max point of, it's not able to bevel everything um, evenly anymore. So just kind of, kind of view it, you know, as you're beveling, you can kind of see how far you can go. And it's looking like 0.3 is about where it starts to kind of max out. So 0.3 is fine. And now we've got a nice bevel design with a flat bottom. So that just makes our monkey a little less, uh, you know, the corners a little less sharp and gives some kind of smoothness around the low poly edges there. So that is the bevel tool. It can be very helpful when you're pretty much creating anything like boxes or just anything you want to have kind of an extra soft um, edge. So let's turn off our wireframes, kind of take a look. Yeah, look, so it's a little softer than, than this guy over here. You know, he's very rigid and sharp. This one's got a nice like kind of softness to it. So that is a very powerful modifier that you'll probably use all the time um, when you're designing. So that is the bevel, bevel modifier. Hopefully that sparks some ideas. And let's go ahead and jump into our last modifier. It's not really a modifier. It's more of just a sculpting experience. So let's go ahead and dive on in it. 